welcome to the Ascendant Trader Group. This is our stock market wrap up for Tuesday, November 10, 2009. Our website is blog.ascendantraders.com where we put together effective video technical analysis trading plans delivered on a daily basis. Our daily trade plans are designed to help us stay uh, abreast of what's going on in the market. We want to look at the calendars, economic earnings, upgrades, and downgrades. We want to check the major indices, scan for new trades, and I always want to make sure that we have time to spend with our family. So what about today? Well, for the most part, we didn't really do anything today. The market was unclear. Uh, you can say that the market wanted to digest this big 200-point move. Um, the Dow was able to still edge out a slight uh, 2009 high, uh, closing high. There's a difference. And um, the dollar fluctuated against the other major currencies. Remember, we've been talking about that there's been a uh, uh, direct correlation between what the dollar does and what the market does. Uh, and, and when there's a lack of a catalyst, earnings, economic news, the market will find something to move the market. And right now, it's been the do dollar. So the dollar didn't move, nor did the market. Uh, and that's even after uh, one of the British, I don't know, finance ministers talked about that uh, England is the most likely of all major economies to lose their AAA rating. And I thought that's, that's pretty major. Um, Moody's had some positive commentary about AIG, uh, basically saying that AIG is going to be able to pay back their credit line back to the uh, Treasury Department. But again, even that didn't help financials. Financials will move to S&P. This didn't help it. Of course, AIG had bad earnings last week. So we had a mixed week. Only five of the uh, ten sectors in the positive territory. Again, the Dow was only up 20, and the other two markets were down. As far as the earnings calendar, I just put Beezer up here. Again, we're in the weak companies. These companies aren't going to move the market. But I did find it interesting because Beezer was supposed to lose money, and they posted a profit. So that was interesting when we're talking about the housing industry. Nothing on the upgrades and the downgrades front. So as we look at Wednesday, what are we going to see? Well, again, we still have no economic data until the 12th. Uh, on the earnings calendar, we have Macy's before. Again, not going to move the market. And we still have our splits calendar. So let's go ahead and take a look at the charts. Here we have the Dow Jones. You can see we have our slight um, closing high for 2009. And you can see the swing high that we've made here. And uh, since Mark, we've made all these beautiful swing highs. And here we are right now at the highest point for 2009. But again, one of the things we've been talking about, and it was, uh, it's nice to see the uptick in volume yesterday, but once again the volume died off so again we have a consolidation day with no real clear conviction on one direction or the other let's go over to the Nasdaq and with the Nasdaq what don't we have we don't have a new swing high uh, we, we could really could say we're in a nice range of about 2050 up to about 2200 here um, nice consolidation range and really you know conservative traders play the breakout if you get above 2175 20, 2200 play that if we break 2050 uh, 2025 here play that um, or you can play the consolidation move in between and finally with the S&P 500 you can see uh, we did not make that swing high um, we are close though to the previous swing high here in uh, mid-March, mid-October, mid but again, volume dropped off and was uh, again a bearish day. So where's the conviction? Let's go take a look at the internals to see if we see anything there. Looking at the internals, we can see a couple things. First of all, we're confirming what the chart said, which was the volume was down on the, on the NICE. NASDAQ was about the same. We do see uh, negative breadth uh, on both the NASDAQ and the NICE, but it is just 0.4, so anything below 0.5 is, is bearish, but, you know, that's not t hugely uh, that bad. Um, as far as uh, the advanced decliners, you can see we did have more declines today. Here it is, about a 500 difference on the NICE, about 800 difference on the NASDAQ. So the NASDAQ was a little bit more bearish as far as advanced decliners, stocks moving up, stocks moving down. But we still have a respectable 
uh, stocks making new highs. Um, remember, we were all the way down to 16, and actually, we even had stocks making new lows last week. So, um, 212, not great, but nothing uh, to uh, cry about. So, our internals really aren't giving us anything either. So, uh, what do we have to look for? Uh, we don't have earnings. We don't have uh, economic data for another day, not until Thursday. So, watch the dollar again and see if any news come across the pond from the Asian or the British or the Japanese um, markets. Taking a quick look at the aftermarket uh, move, and we, you can see we basically close here, and we took off. And I'll be honest with you, right now I haven't really found <laughs> what that catalyst is that we took off like this aftermarket. And you can kind of see now we're pulling back a little bit. It'd be interesting to see if we pull all the way back down to here. Uh, maybe this was some stop searching, but uh, right now the market is up in the after hours, and we'll see where we head up at in the morning. As we move on to our educational portion of our video, you know we are talking about the, the fact that the market can do anything at any time. Anything can happen. And this is one of the things that separates beginning traders and professional traders because a professional trader has the ability to recognize that these unknown variables, these hidden variables, the fact that every trade is dependent upon what? Traders. And that means some traders think the stock or the future or whatever vehicle that you're choosing, instrument, some people believe it's going to go up, some people think they said sell it. So therefore, you have to be able to predict people's rational for rationale for buying and selling a stock and uh, you know you, you're able to read people's minds on why they're selling a stock or buying a stock all of that stuff is, is just you know I'm un, unable un, un, to predict what that's going to do so therefore the best traders don't try to figure all out with just market analysis remember what we talked about yesterday you can't um, hone in and say because I have a rising three pattern the market's going to go up heck today we were starting a rising three pattern we had the big update yesterday today's a con consolidation day um, a break above today's high technically a break above yesterday's high is confirming a rising three pattern or a mat and hold pattern but that's just market analysis that's just technical analysis but anything can happen because tomorrow um, with no news Maybe traders are going to think, okay, we made new closing highs and we need to sell. So the best traders don't trade just the charts. They trade the market data. So when tomorrow happens, they're able to adjust to what the market gives them. The typical trader, on the other hand, does the exact opposite. They, they kind of believe that if they can't see it or hear it or feel it, that it's not true. And therefore, they don't have to believe that a trade is uncertain. They believe that the outcome of their trade is, is certain which is why most traders lose money because they believe in just what they know and not necessarily what the rest of us know. So you have to begin to again create a trading plan and a system, practice that trading plan, implement that trading plan and then make adjustments according to the market conditions because at some point the market sentiment changes and you have to be able to adjust with that. As always, we want to talk about our partners. First and foremost, we have a futures trading room that is just awesome, even on a day like today. If you go to this link right here, you'll see their, their, their trading record, track record. Uh, Alex is doing an excellent job. I'm in there. I love the room. Can't speak higher about that room. And they have a great 10-day trial access for $30. Again, come check out my uh, video series on why you should be trading futures. And you'll know that $30 can be made very quite easily with the leverage of futures. And so again, because we believe in futures, we've got a great futures broker for you to choose. And if they have e-minis as low as $300, I haven't found any other broker that goes down to $300. And remember, that's the advantage of futures, leverage, and you still have NinjaTrader, all the great trading platforms. And if you go through our link, you get 20 free contracts. So hopefully I'll get to see you on Sunday. Uh, Jumpstart your week with a good review session to uh, talk about what's coming for our next week every Sunday at 8 o'clock. 
There's our, our podcast. If you want to go ahead and just get these um, downloaded into your iTunes every day, there's the link. Follow us on Twitter, twitter.com backslash the center traders. And as always, trade at your own risk. And I will see you tomorrow.